Hello and welcome to the treasured page Build a Journal Autumn Swap. It is of course the 1st of September and we are having a brand new project. First of all, a huge well done for everybody that's been tackling the summer sun catchers for our August project and these are all going off now to be received for next week. So moving on to the idea for our September project, we are going to have a little bit of a scavenger hunt this September. We're going to have to look for a sturdy, stiff board and it needs to be something of this nature. The backing that you can get on sketchbooks is going to work perfectly because what we're going to be doing for September is making writing boards. We're just going to need a nice sized writing board which will fit into our builder journal. So looking at that you can have a look what you may have. I mean I don't suppose you'll have this but Again, it is a thick board at the back of what once was some tearaway paper that I found in the children's department. This is why it's got all the glitter on it. If you have a keen eye for these things, you may have already squirreled things away that you can see are useful in your stash already. Some of the other things you could look at is plastic from file folders from office supplies and you may find that the please do not bend envelopes that we can get gives you a sufficient board. It is still quite flexible but you could add some sturdier paper on the top and strengthen that up as you decorate and embellish your writing board for this project. So those are really good options and they are junk mail free and affordable if you save them or have them. So that's why it's a scavenger hunt because you will probably find that you already have chipboard around the house in one form or another. You've just got to look for it. It could even be a lid to an old storage box if you've got something that's seen better days you could potentially turn that into a writing board for a journal. It could even be an old folder that you have that you might want to upgrade and you, you can still use this board. It is good quality card. The backing of a calendar that you might have hanging up could work very nicely but what we want to avoid is packaging where there is hidden corrugated card within because that is not going to work it's going to be flexible and ultimately if you're using it as a backing board you will find that when you write on it the pen will go in and make a mark so no corrugated card that means no packaging boxes or anything that you would expect to come through as a lightweight box. When you found your board, you can then start to think about how you want to construct a writing board. And a writing board is really useful, even if you're not using it within the journal. You can have this off to one side as a tool to be able to embellish your pages as you go. So you will be able to add a stamp to your pages and have a firm base to press onto. So this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to have a look at the size of the pages. We're going to make it narrower and we're going to make it shorter. And the whole point is that it will eventually fit in a pocket somewhere. So it might fit into a side tuck or it might fit into a pocket that's created at the back of the journal or at the front. So it's something that's pleasing to look at, useful, functional and movable. When you've got your board you might want to now have a look at your papers and how you're going to decorate it. So what we're going to do is one writing board, potentially one pocket for it to sit into and you're going to decorate it using collage methods. So what we're making is one writing board in any style that you like but we are now moving into the autumn and the full portion of the journal and you could start to think about those colours, those tones, those textures and have a look at how you might want to decorate it. It could be that you like the vintage look and you want to stick with that and you have some papers or you have a digital kit that will 
emphasize the feel and the mood that you would like to work within it's whatever's on your craft table so don't be limited don't put a theme on it that you, do, you then have to have more expense or finding things just find something that's pleasing to you that you think others will like and have a go so this is a page from a vintage book it is a lovely find and that would work very nicely and just as some wrapping paper would work really nicely if you happen to keep anything like this. This was a piece of paper that was designed to be an end paper to uh, an actual book binding book. I have some of that and that's wonderful. And, and then vintage sheet music is always an option and again you can print these things from digital kits. But also just have a look, maybe you have got some present wrapping paper that you could use, anything really. You could wrap it with paper that you have painted on. And so you are just going to be decorating this board into an interesting piece. What you have to remember is one side absolutely has to be flat. So really think of your papers. If you're going to be putting something on, it needs to be smooth. So you need to keep it as flat as possible. Steer away from any papers that are handmade that may have some lumps and bumps and fibres in them that would prevent you from being able to write in a smooth, clean manner. So that is important on one side only. On the other side, though, if that's your flat writing board side, on this side, what I think would be wonderful is a real scrappy collage and really go for it and start adding scraps and things from your craft room and really embellish the other side. You could add a pocket to the back and make sure that you keep things flat. You could add a very thin fine pocket on the back so that you could tuck some things quite useful if you want to be able to move the writing board about the journal and also have somewhere to store lists of things that you want to then remember or dates or times or something that you would like to write on your journal page eventually it is quite useful to have a pocket but not essential and then the other thing we're going to do so you're going to make make one writing board and then you may want to make a pocket for it to sit into so you could make a pocket a really nice pocket with a gusseted edge to allow it to expand because this is going to be a thicker piece. You need to think about the edge of it, you need to think about the size of it. There's a number of really good videos out there already about how to tackle the project and lots of YouTubers in the junk journaling community already have these and they are some really good resources out there so do go and have a look and research it. It's writing junk journaling writing board. So one side has to be smooth, the other side you can have collage, you can have texture, you can have fabric, you can have any of the things that we like, you could even have lace. But you have to remember that this is going to be a functional writing board piece that can be moved around the journal and so therefore you want to make sure that anything on the other side is secure and not raised with too much embellishment that's going to make it wibble or wobble or ultimately upset the ability for it to be a writing board. And if you think of when you've got your journal, and do consider this, already some of the pieces in our journal have raised embellished areas and some of them have got little jewels and things and buttons and things that could be disturbed. So when you're putting a writing board on here, so for instance, I can't write on this page because there's a raised bit there, but if I put the writing board there, I can absolutely stamp on it, work on it, write on it, do whatever I want. And that's actually a really lovely firm backing. So that works nicely. But what if I have then gone and embellished something over here and done a very fine pocket? I could find that something could tear or catch on the back. So just think of that as you're decorating the back of your writing board. Just think what what have I got? What am I putting on here that could catch? And maybe that's where you want to think about a nice smooth back, maybe a lovely collage that has been varnished, and seal it in somehow, using some of the matte medium gels and things like that, and really just keep everything smooth. So actually, it's a challenge to try and keep things smooth. And if you can work in a sneaky pocket, then by all means have a go. Otherwise, make a pocket 
for this to slot in. So it's going to be one writing board and it's going to be a pocket. So the pocket can either be part of the design or it could be something that can be attached to the front or the back of the journal and then the writing board slot in. So that is essentially the project. So just as a quick measurement guide, and I know we are all working in different size journals and it depends the world over what size pages yours are. Uh, in the UK, we are using A4 paper folded into A5 and I think We'll work with that, but you can obviously make these measurements bigger. But I'm going to aim for a five inch board in the width. And that will allow, if we say that this is A5, that will allow uh, plenty of room to manoeuvre and be able to slot into a pocket. So there's our five inch mark there. And I've got playroom either side for a pocket if I want to slot it in. Well, I, want, I will want to slot it in at some point. I will want it to fit inside the journal. And then for lengthwise, so let's say that's the A5, I would just come in probably three quarters of an inch, maybe two and a half centimetres, just come in. And we will say that we'll have it at five inches going that way and we will probably want it at seven and a half, maybe seven and a half is just about right. So let's say seven and a half by five and a half inches is something to aim for. I think that's going to be a nice size to work on in anyone's journal and it can come and sit quite neatly in the front or the back or even in the middle of the journal in a nice pocket that you could make. And if you're new to build a journal, this is what I have got so far for my first two seasons of the year. I'm going to say that this is one journal and now I'm going to be starting another one for the autumn and fall and then the winter part of the journal will be a second journal completely and they will come together as a set I hope. So this would be the first project going into the second journal. And have a look in the playlist for build a journal for 20 24 because this journal is going to be used next year and we are ahead of the game by making it throughout this year slowly quietly in the background just project by project and piecing it together and that's a lot of fun because the whole thing's been about really having a look at what we've already got what we can get our hands on what we can swap with others what we can borrow and beg and and find in nature and just building a journal from absolutely nothing only the things that we're finding or being given. All right guys so that's the inspiration. Have a little go. Let's see how we get on. So it's very difficult to cut this in a guillotine without it coming out as a raggedy edge um, but I think for what I should be doing it doesn't really matter. I'm going to wrap some paper around the outsides, create my surface on the front that is smooth and then I would like to do a collage on the back. So I'm just wanting to get the measurement right and this is going to be a nice slim writing board that will tuck within the project. So I'm saying seven and a half I think but I'm just going to check that. So seven and a half inches is about 19 centimetres, just over 12 and a half centimetres there. Okay, I am able to cut this with scissors, but I think a craft knife and a craft mat would be better if you want a nice sharp edge or if you've got anything thicker than what I'm using here. If you're using chipboard that you might use for the cover of a journal, then you can use that absolutely. This is slightly thinner than that, so um, it's, it's good. It's got a good strength to it. It could be that you've got some 12 by 12 decorative paper pads and you've got some paper that you could use there and then what you're going to be doing is just wrapping the paper around it. So in its simplest form, okay, we're going to be wrapping paper around it and gluing that on. I'll show you properly in a minute. So just to give you an idea, this is what we're doing. We're wrapping paper around the board 
You could use a coffee or tea stain paper and you could do some nice stamping or you could paint a picture or you could do anything that you like. You can also add some book corners to your card and really give it a nice finished edge. So just to give you a very rough idea, I've got some book corners that I've added here just loosely. This is just a mock-up and I've got some paper there which is just a avocado, coffee dye, tea stain, that sort of thing. And from here here you really could just do some painting, you could do some stamping and you could even paste on very carefully, do some decoupage images from a napkin, you could do that. So that's one way of doing it and that's one way of finishing it. But also then on the back if we take all of this off and if we've got it stuck down all nice without with mitered corners which is like that. So we're bringing in the piece of paper there, we'll be gluing it down and then making our mitered corners by turning them in. We could then start putting another piece of paper over the top and then go for a really lovely scrappy collage, something that doesn't raise up too much. If you're using decorative paper, if you have any wrapping paper that you want to use, you could give yourself an allowance enough so that you would be able to pull that round and then you can just work that over and then maybe give yourself a nice longer scrap there so we would have that scrap elsewhere to play with and bring up the corner and mitre in your edges. like that. Let's just turn this around so we can see what it looks like. That's actually quite nice. Okay, so we could have this looking like this and then you could add the corners to that and that would be a very different look and it would be quite smart, quite grand and really quite pretty, something that you might find in a hotel. So you could do something like that, so that's another option. We could use our vintage book page and we could choose which picture we're going to use and maybe go with the berries or something like that. And just to give you the idea and inspiration without actually damaging the paper too much, this is the sort of thing, this is sort of how it might look and then we would have the corner on there and then you would have the vintage images of the botanics and that would come down there. So that is another idea to try. And you can make lots of these. These are lovely, lovely idea. And then you could take some of the bits that you didn't use and use them on the other side as part of the scrappy collage. You could also do some stenciling. You could do some raised bits that were soft, like a fabric and maybe a patchwork. Maybe fussy cuts or some stitching sewing. You can add lace trim. Quite fun to have a lace trim down the edge just as something that sticks out but doesn't interfere with the writing. You could even have pom-poms down the side, I've seen that sort of thing. Audition some sheet music paper and see how we like that. So that's going to be similar to this. And then if we add the corners, you don't have to have metal corners, you could just cut out triangles of paper and perhaps you've got a decorative punch, you might be able to make your own, keep it flat and then you haven't got the bulk of the metal on the other side. But if you've got something a little bit more modern that hasn't got a tear in it, if you're able to wrap it around the board then seal it in with either a varnish or something like uh, or, or something like a matte medium or a matte mod podge then that would be a good option. Quite a plain board really that one. I might use this paper in my collage on the other side but I do like the idea of making triangles of paper with a scalloped edge and perhaps not having the book corner but trying to recreate that then it keeps it flat on the other side because when we turn it over we're going to have this bit even if it's squashed in you're still going to have um, something bulky but 
that's probably fine. There are lots of things to consider in this project. There's uh, just three ideas for you. I'm sure you can come up with your own. Okay, so let's imagine this is the other side and we've now got some music paper. Let's just see what a scrappy collage might look like on here. It could then be orientated this way and that could be a secret pocket in there like that. So that would be glued on. It's still flat. We've got just a few raised embellishments, a nice big butterfly, all the little scraps bits that we usually go for or certainly have as remnants on the desk in the tray and this sort of thing but you could glue that down and then you've got a pocket you could have it so that you have this bit sticking out you could make it so that's a bit shorter and you've got a pocket there you could have it with a file folder tab so it sticks out something like that still a pocket still a tuck just imagine this for a minute this is covered now in the paper uh, we've got our surface on the other side that we're happy with and now we're going for the collage this is the sort of thing that you could do you could do a scrappy collage on top of that so that whole thing is similar to this or, or this is a smaller version of it so this could be your board and then on the other side it's nice and smooth and plain we don't do sewing because that will interfere with the writing so it's a no sew project but you can sew your pocket so if this is going to be a pocket we want something to make it expand on the page to allow for the size of the writing board and the whole thing will be able to stick down on the inside of the journal cover on the front or the back and possibly inside where the signatures meet that's the idea one pocket one writing board and a lot of fun to be had so thank you so much for listening i hope that that gives you some inspiration to go off and make your own projects and i will be tackling this in my next video and we'll see what i come up with so thank you so much and above everything else just slow down and make crafting time for you bye bye now mm -hmm.